Hey, welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be reviewing John Romita Jr. and Frank Miller's Superman Year One Number Three. Did it defy my expectations, which were very low as set by the first two issues? Let's find out today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. Well, the question I teased was uh, one about Superman Year One. Uh, did it live up to my expectations, or rather my very low expectations? Did it live down to those expectations? What am I trying to say here? Well, I wish I could say that it really pulled it out in the end and redeemed itself. This is issue three of three. I've got major problems with, man, the plot, the pacing quibbles with the artwork and a few other things and especially like why why was this book created um let's waste no more time and dive straight into the million dollar comics cam and get going on a uh post-mortem for superman year one because uh man this thing arrived doa Num number one was tepid at best number two got kind of stupid and man number three has taken it over the top to make this um yet another kind of embarrassing modern frank miller comic let's take a look um i got the john romita jr cover we'll take a look at the frank miller cover after this uh and uh yeah you know one thing it's in this super large you know extra large format which i hate square bound Makes it tough to lay open flat on the page. Do I care that I'm wrinkling the cover very much? No, I think I'm going to sell this series back to somewhere or someone soon because it just wasn't that exciting. Well, what happened, right? Um, we start off. Uh, Lois Lane is apparently exploring like uh, Atlantis or undersea. Like it's tying back into the Atlantis stuff that we saw in a previous issue. She's in danger. Her For whatever reason, she's got her own solo submarine, which doesn't make any sense. But she's down there, and it's getting attacked, and Superman saves her, man. And, um, you know, well, saves her, but, uh, you know, he's able to, like, get her out of harm's way, that is. But still, she's in shock. He has to do CPR. This is one of the... Th few things that I li did like about this is that like even if Superman saves somebody f like from a predicament l like what can he do if somebody has a heart attack or whatever like well he ha does have military training so he knows CPR and he performed that on Lois and uh surprise surprise she does not die uh she's back alive and he immediately takes her out and, and takes her to safety I guess puts her in a tree Lois is a very, like, headstrong character in this. I, I do kind of like the characterization of Lois Lane in this book. It's another thing I liked. She's, like, a super action junkie. She wants to be where the action is as an investigative reporter. Okay. Speaking of action and the lack of any type of stakes or thrillingness, uh, oh, we get a call back to some of the Marines. Now, Clark is, is he, obviously, he sees the Marines there, and he invites them to come on out and to fight them. Because they want to stop Superman. Okay, so they're going to try it. And of course, nothing does anything because he's Superman. So he kind of takes it easy on him. He's like, oh, these are my guys. But, you know, I got to whatever. Motivation not super clear. Then something really weird happens. They, they hit him with these, like, tasers. And uh, and he says it's... it's packing enough charge to brown out a battleship it tickles that's a call back to an old superman image where he's getting struck by lightning and he says it tickles but and it makes me stronger so strong i could just plain bust so in this frank miller universe which was alluded to be the universe that eventually becomes the dark knight returns okay so we'll talk about why what what's happening here doesn't make a ton of sense to me but We'll talk about that a little bit later. So he's getting charged up by electricity. Electricity makes this Superman much stronger. Okay. Um, still, Marines are not convinced. 
we're going to get several more pages of them trying things on Superman that we know are not going to do anything, including a crazy super tether weapon, another electricity thing that just makes him strong. Why they even have this weapon? Like, it wasn't designed for Superman, or was it? I don't know. He kicks sand in their faces, literally and figuratively, I guess. Um... Still got oh Lo Lois is going into shock, so he's got to care for her with his cape, and this is what Superman does with his cape. It's another thing that they go into in this book that's a little weird. Next, he decides, okay, she's a reporter. I want to be a reporter. So after those pages of whatever, we get one page of oh, and then I went to college and became a journalist and got a job for the Daily Planet in Metropolis. One page later, we're in Metropolis. Okay. Uh, so Clark's there, and immediately he sees a girl, she's gonna get hit by a car, no thought for secret identity or anything, he saves her. This rings true to me as something that Clark Kent, Superman would do. He's fast enough, nobody's really gonna see. Everybody's just like, whoa, out of nowhere. Like, he moved like lightning. And, okay, w one of the couple, another couple moments, of, like, I mean, come on, Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. are both seasoned accomplished veterans of the industry uh, arguably masters of their craft frank miller certainly at one time uh, and ramita i'm gonna say is a master of the medium as well like he, he can he knows the storytelling angle anyway and this is some of his better looking work in my opinion uh rendering wise but so immediately clark kent is working for perry white and uh decides you know, he needs a disguise, so he comes up with a whole idea of glasses and a fedora, which maybe made sense in the 40s, but now you just look like a turbo dork. Maybe that's the goal, but whatever. It changes his silhouette, so he dressed to unimpress. Again, everybody wants to try and justify this whole Superman can disguise himself thing because he's disguising in plain sight and whatever. I've always kind of liked the idea that maybe Superman just is fast enough and can move fast enough that nobody ever really gets a good look at Superman's face, but maybe that's not true. Um, or maybe he uses his x-ray vision to uh, uh, destroy all the film negatives. Oh, that's when there was film cameras. I'm old. Okay. Um, next, Superman decides he's just going to listen for crime, and he's like, well, but there's so much crime. Even I'm only one man. What can I do? I'm going to listen to Banks. Because, all right, let's not listen for murders. Let's listen for, like, corporate interests and money being stolen that's insured by the government anyway. Oh, well, okay, whatever. So he does that. Great, he stops these guys and he's going to save all this money. But, you know, like, he stacks up cars in an out. Like, how much is this going to, how much does it cost to destroy those cars? And how much is it going to cost to remove this stuff? This is a super nuisance. This is super dickery at its finest. Um, so we get more of this. We get more low stakes Superman fighting street criminals and then being really surprised that he's bulletproof. Okay. And then he grabs him and he takes him. His whole thing is his shtick is he ties him up or he incapacitates. He doesn't kill anybody. Of course, he's Superman. He's super powerful, but in control enough that he can do what it takes. He can stop these guys. He can bend steel, but he's not going to kill him. All right, I buy that. He sends him, ties him up and puts signs on him. I'm a... I'm Iggy Baco, I deal heroin to children. My name is Freddie Karn, I'm a rapist. Okay, kind of amazing Spider-Man-ish. I, I, I want to get real for a second. Like, where's the evidence? Where's the, like, how is this not violating their rights? Is there any due process in Metropolis? Like, are any of these people going to jail? Or are they immediately getting bounced? Because, like, what the hell? Okay. So, anyway. More crime fighting. Uh, more Lois kind of like saying, oh, wait, hey, Lois finally going, hey, he looks like Kent, just like Clark Kent. Now, there's a thought. And then she's like, nah, you are too hard. Ah, it can't be him. She's the world's greatest investigative reporter, folks. Um, okay. So we get some Jimmy Olsen stuff we don't really need. Like, we get a lot of, like, weird filler stuff, which is really weird because you'll see the pacing of this book is all over the place. Um, so, uh, so we get a little moment where like, we get to hear what, like Clark, where's Clark? Oh, he's in the bathroom, Miss Lane. Oh, something's going on. And, and like Lois Lane thinks Clark is useless and that kind of like gets to him. 
All right, he's a Superman, but he's just a man. Nice looking splash page. Superman in the rain, I guess. Anyway, um, we get some really unclear like stuff going on in the newsroom. Something is happening. There's a story. We're not really clear what it is. It says, oh, we got to clear the pay the the uh, the plates for the front page, like stop the presses kind of thing. <clears throat> and uh, it says just mentions one thing that the, there's Farsi. Somebody's speaking in Farsi. So this is our only clue as to who this terrorist group might be. Like, we don't get to see them, so we don't know. There's no way you could say this is racist, I guess. Uh, despite Frank Miller's track record of, like, racism in some previous works, like Holy Terror, uh, I think this was probably DC's, like, look, put some masks on these guys, make no ethnic references, but he had to sneak in that Farsi reference. Okay, so they're maybe they're Iranian. I don't have a big problem with that. Um, so Superman, they're using babies as hostages. They're ready to kill babies. These guys are bad. Superman's going to stop them. You know, there's something that should take a, a page, a, two pages, a couple minutes, but no, we're going to drag it on and on over pages and pages. And Lois has got to get involved for no great reason, except to show like, oh, this is great. Oh, I love, I'm Lois Lane. I love action. Okay, all right, so finally he stops everything, and we get introduced now for the first time to uh, Lex Luthor, who's just sort of like a dude. You know, he thinks he's great, he thinks Superman should bow down him, he's an egomaniac, blah, 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 and he just sort of like approaches Superman and says, like, I need you to stop the Batman because Batman's lawless and we want to have, like, official superheroes in metropolis doesn't really spell any of this stuff out the storytelling is terrible we get our first glimpse of the batman and everybody's like, oh man superman and batman fighting wow frank miller at his best right let's find out so first we get wildly out of character batman the first thing we see is batman with, with a gun all right frank's gonna subvert expectations a little bit cool so this is a different kind of batman and we get him here he's he jumps in and he loves the coldness of the water and how it hurts and he loves it. And he's got this crazy little thing he built in his workshop. Slap this little darling together in my workshop, converts seawater straight into electrical power, giving me an ocean of fuel. This concept could have applications. That if I That is, if I ever cared to share it. Yeah, you think a universal, like saltwater powered engines would have any kind of implications on man mankind or society or anything and could really like help people or should we just like keep it for our bat turbine so we can beat up criminal doesn't make a lick of sense especially because i hate batman as super scientist let him be a super detective and hire people and have people to build stuff for him batman doesn't have to do everything anyway Lex Luthor calls a press conference and Superman's there and sort of agreeing with him, but not. And Lex is saying how Superman's going to be the official superhero. But Clark never really answers or Superman never really answers. Next thing we know, Luthor's meeting with the Joker. Oh, we get to see the Joker. This is the one and only page of the Joker in this book. And the Joker is just like, he's like played as like super sane he doesn't laugh he doesn't do anything crazy except he's like he's bored so he's scrolling through his phone looking for like starving children and disasters and stuff to like entertain himself okay uh, but then batman breaks in and apparently like crack crack snap tortures him but says not one bone is broken not one honest this is stupid I want, it doesn't make it look as, and Luthor and a, a Joker in their one page, they hatch a plan. Like, what's the plan going to be? And Joker's like, oh, new super drug. And Luthor's like, oh, brilliant. I'll get my scientists on it. Like the most cliche, stupid movie plot that we've used a million times, including in your stupid Robocop movies, Frank. Come on. So unless this is a comment on that stuff, maybe it is. I'll give, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. It's still not that entertaining. Okay, so back to Lois, back to Lex Luthor. He's a jerk. He beats up his employees. Next thing you know, oh, we get to our Batman Superman confrontation. Man, this is going to be great, right? We remember this from Dark Knight Returns. Really dramatic. 
Batman beat the crap out of Superman. Oh, let's see what happens this time. Well, this time it's different. This is their first meeting. Batman doesn't really know about Superman. None of his shit works. He's got these super tethers that are supposed to stop him, but like nothing's even touching him. And here's where he attacks him with now with electricity. And it's just, you think you can stop me with electricity? It's just food for me. It can't destroy me. It only makes me stronger. And then he's got the power gloves on, electrical gloves, and is getting him, and it's just making him stronger. Does this make any sense to anybody? In Dark Knight Returns, he attacked him with electricity. Granted, he was he had weakened him with some kryptonite first, but no, he had, Superman is not electrical powered. He's solar powered. We know this. So why? And even in the book, he's struck by lightning after the nuclear bomb goes off and it hurts him. It doesn't power him up. It doesn't tickle. And then he finds this flower and releases the solar energy in it in Dark Knight Returns. That was cool, striking, awesome, neat, ties it directly into Superman. This makes no s It doesn't make sense. But what makes even less sense is Superman's about to clobber Batman and who should show up but Wonder Woman and who in three pa two pages says, no, we need to join together. No more fights. Together, we serve with one purpose, one cause, justice. And with those words, an era begins. So this is like Miller doing the, the doing the Batman versus Superman thing like his way or something? I don't get it at all. They, they get Lex Luthor and they tie him up with the, with the golden lasso and they get him to admit to all his crimes and stuff. And then Luther comes out and starts spilling stuff about Brainiac and the last tribe of, last planet of Krypton and the bottled city of Kandor. And Superman's like, Kandor lives? Like he knows about Kandor? Which really has not been established at all in this series. And next, Wonder Woman, as Superman's leaving, Wonder Woman asks him for a kiss. And he kisses her on the forehead and takes off. And she says, you boy, you sweet Adonis, go become a man. Then you come back for me. Really out of character with modern Wonder Woman, but okay. And then we end with, this is the end, right? This is the three issue series. and But it ends with the never ending battle begins, teasing like what's next. Superman's going to go into space to rescue Kandor from Brainiac. Something that might have been awesome to see in this series, but we didn't, okay? We didn't. By the way, here's the John Romita Jr. cover. This is the Frank Miller optional cover. I didn't see it at my store. It's definitely Frank Miller. I, I, I think this cover works way better. It's still not great, and this was far from a great series. Uh, this was um, pretty bad, folks. I can't recommend it. I don't recommend you pick it up. Maybe find it in the in the used section. I can't see this being a graphic novel that's going to become a perennial bestseller like Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, or Batman Year One, or Sin City, or many any of the dozens or multiple incredible great graphic novels that frank miller has created this to me smells like a movie treatment like maybe hollywood has had enough of frank miller after the spirit was such a bomb and the last sin city did nothing and and this is his way of like trying to like get a treatment together in the comic book world where he still has some juice and some clout but let me tell you this frank if you keep putting out stuff like this you're going to use up any remaining goodwill you've used up a lot of it but you're so awesome you've got a you still have a, a lot left right but man if you keep putting out stuff like this you're crapping on your legacy you're crapping on uh, uh, on your fans who expect a lot more from you and rightfully so because you're a master john romita jr i think is doing some of his better recent work in here we'll talk soon about his some other recent work including his work on batman um, but for now, hey, thanks everybody who has supported this show and has watched and especially commented. So the comments are the part that's getting me the most juiced and excited about this channel. So please, please, please take a moment. Uh, let me know what you think of this comic, this review, this channel, what you'd like to see more of. 
and uh, thank you for taking the time and participating. I don't think you need to read this Frank Miller comic, but I'm going to be back soon and I'm going to review some older Frank Miller work so we can just get a taste of what once made this guy so awesome. Uh, until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.